Hey there, you might know about sequences in Game Maker Studio 2.3 which allows you to create animations and cutscenes and all that. I thought of doing something more with it, creating a game loop in a sequence by using the broadcast messages feature. This game where you have to throw a ball at the target is controlled by a sequence and this is that sequence. So it's a simple animation where the player comes out, throws something and then goes back in. At different points in the animation, I've placed broadcast messages. So these messages go to the game system and we can basically control the game state through a sequence. In this video, we're gonna go through that whole process and create this game from scratch. If you're not familiar with sequences, you can still watch, but I do recommend going through my sequence introduction videos, which you can find here. Also, make sure to check out my Game Maker courses on Udemy. I have a lot of in-depth GML content on there, including a course on making an action-adventure game, a course about a crafting game, and more. You can check them out through the links in the description. So let's begin with the video. Now let's go into Game Maker and start creating our sequence. I have a sprite for the ground here, where the player's gonna come out from. And here I have a group for the player itself. You can create a group through this button. And inside the player group, I have sprites for all the player states that I wanna be able to use. So this is the same technique that we used in the pickaxe animation videos, where we create a group with all the player states inside it and apply all animations to the group only. So that is what I'm doing here. I have a position and a rotation track under the player group. And I've applied animations to those tracks to make the player come out and perform a throwing animation. Inside the group, I'm only showing the state that I want the player to be in. So here I'm showing the jump state, and here the idle state and so on. And all the other position and rotation animations are applied to the group itself. So we have a basic animation now, but we can make it a little more juicier. For that I've added a scale track here, and applied some squashing and stretching animations to the player. So now the animation looks a little more alive. My next step is to finish the animation by making the player go back into the ground at the end. So our base animation loop is now done. You know in the game how the player has a ball and they are able to throw that ball. Now the ball is not actually a part of the sequence. It's only placed in the player's hands with some GML code. But now the question is how do we know where the ball should be? We don't know where the player's hand is and where the ball should be placed. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna place a tracker object in the player's hand and using that tracker object, we can know where the ball should be placed. So I have an object called O tracker here, and I'm gonna drag it into the player group in my sequence. By the way, I'm using an object here because I wanna be able to get the position of the tracker easily. I'm gonna extend the duration of the track, and you can see the tracker here. You can see how it's moving with the group, and now we wanna animate it with the player, placing it on the player's hand. So I'll come here and add a position track to the tracker, so we can animate its position now. And on the first frame, I'm gonna place it somewhere around here. It's gonna animate with the player. And you can see it's not in the correct position. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna move the first keyframe here and place the tracker in the correct position. And now I'm gonna move the first keyframe back to the first frame. And you can see how the tracker is moving correctly with the player's hand, at least for the first state. For the second state, we're gonna have to create a new keyframe. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that and I'm gonna place it in the player's hand here. This works well enough for the second state, but if you go back to the first state, you're gonna see that it's a little messed up now. This is happening because the tracker is being animated between these two keyframes. So to prevent this from happening, we can simply right click on this keyframe and select stretch parameter key, but then we're gonna have to do that for every keyframe and that might get a little tedious. So we have a simpler option. We can simply right click on the position track, go under interpolation and just turn it off. So now there won't be any interpolation or animation between any keyframes on this track. Now here I'm gonna add another keyframe for the third state and move the tracker to the player's hand. And it's animating well here. And now at this point we don't want the tracker anymore since the player has thrown the ball. So I'm simply gonna end the track here and that's gonna be it for the tracker. Now we can simply get the position of the tracker and this way we'll know where the ball needs to be placed. Now with our base animation done and with our tracker in place, we can start placing our broadcast messages. The sequence is mainly gonna be sending out three messages, one for enabling the input, one for waiting for the input, and one for waiting for the ball. So now on this frame, I wanna enable the input, so I'll click here to create a new broadcast message, and for our message, I'll enter enable underscore input. Now this isn't a variable or a keyword, it's a simple string, so you can basically write anything in it. 
in game whenever the playing sequence comes to this frame it's gonna send this message to the broadcast message event which can be found under other events so there you can read the message and basically do whatever you want with it now back in my sequence i'm gonna click on ok and that's gonna create the broadcast message on this frame i'm gonna add another message now which will be on this frame and for this message i'm simply gonna enter wait for input so while the input will be enabled on this frame here the sequence is gonna pause and wait for the player's input now our final broadcast message will be on this frame and this will simply say wait for ball after the player throws the ball we are gonna start a timer and three or four seconds later the ball is gonna disappear so this message means that the sequence should wait for the ball to disappear before continuing so when the ball does disappear the sequence will continue the player will go back into the ground and then it'll start again so these are all the broadcast messages we are gonna need for now i'm gonna set up my room now so in the layers here i have a background layer an asset layer with my clouds and an instance layer with a target object i'm gonna create a new asset layer now and this will be for my sequence so sequences in the room editor are placed inside asset layers i'm gonna place mine here and you can preview the sequence by clicking on the play button here so this sequence will play in game as soon as the room starts and you can also double click on the sequence to bring up some options now we're gonna start coding the actual game so here i've added some new objects we have a game manager then we have a ball object and then we have a target object which is already in the room we're gonna start coding in the o manager object so i'll open it and we're gonna begin with the create event now basically our game is gonna have three states start input and end start is when the sequence starts and the player still has the ball input is when player input is enabled but the ball has not been thrown yet and end is after the ball has been thrown so i have all of my game states in an enum called game state and here i have a variable that stores which game state we are currently in so by default we begin with game state dot start then here we have a variable that stores the id of the sequence element that is sending us the broadcast messages so whenever there is a sequence playing in a room that's a sequence element and we're gonna receive its id in the broadcast message event now let's open that event and see how we receive broadcast messages we receive data in the event in a ds map called event data and we can read keys from that map using the question mark accessor so here we get the event type then the actual message and then the id of the sequence element we are getting a message from a sequence so the event type here should be sequence event and now we can do whatever we want with our message so here i'm running a switch statement on the message and depending on what the message says i'm doing different things i have a case for enable input a case for wait for input and a case for wait for ball let's see what we are doing with the enable input message when we receive an enable input message we set the game state to input so now the player should be able to give input and here we also store the element id in our sequence element variable now here we have a case for the wait for input message and here's what we are doing here we are checking if the state is still set to input and that means that the player has not given their input yet so in that case the sequence needs to wait and that's why we are pausing the sequence here so as the message says the sequence will wait for input now we handle the input game state in the step event so let's open that event and see what we have here here i have a condition that checks if the game state is input so we are only handling the input game state here and then we are checking if the player has pressed the left mouse button this will be our only input in the game and if it is pressed then we set the game state to end this means that the player has given their input so we can continue to the next state now here we are checking if our sequence is paused and if it is we simply play it i'm gonna run the game now and test it you can see the sequence playing and now it pauses to wait for the player's input so it's still paused and if i click then the sequence continues after that it simply starts again and then again it waits for player input now we're gonna work on adding a ball in the game and attaching it to the player's hand so i'm gonna go into the create event of the manager and here i have some new code on this line i'm creating a ball instance and i'm storing its id in this variable then i have a couple more variables this tells whether the ball is thrown so it starts at false and it will be set to true when you throw the ball now here we have a variable for the ball direction this will be set using the player's input and the ball will be thrown in this direction 
Now we are positioning the ball in the player's hands in the step event. So I'll open it and we are doing that here. First of all we are checking if the ball has not been thrown yet. So that's when the ball will be in the player's hands. And in that case we set the position of the ball instance to the position of the tracker instance. So this way the ball will be in the player's hands as long as it's not thrown. Now in this part where we receive player input we have a new line. Here we are simply setting the ball direction. And it will be the direction from the ball's position to the mouse's position. So this will be set when you press the left mouse button. Now we also want to draw an arrow pointing from the ball towards the mouse. So we are doing that in the draw event during the input state. For that we have a condition here to make sure that we are in the input state. And then here we are getting the same direction value. So that's the direction from the ball to the mouse. And using that direction we draw the arrow here. So this is the sprite that we are drawing. Let's go back into the event now and look at the other parameters. We are drawing the arrow at the ball's position. We are not changing the scale. But we are passing in an angle value which is simply the input direction. And then we are specifying the default color and alpha. So now an arrow should be drawn in the game. And our ball should also appear in the player's hands. So I'll run the game and you can now see the ball in the player's hands. And you can also see the arrow during the input state. So if I click the arrow disappears. Now you can see that the ball appears above the ground and that looks odd. So to fix that first of all I'm gonna go into my sequence and make the ground here invisible. Then I'm gonna go into my room and here add a foreground layer at the top with the ground image inside it. So this will now appear above everything else. We're gonna work on the ball physics now and throwing it. So first of all I'm gonna go into my room settings and at the very bottom make sure that physics is enabled. Then I'll go into my ball object and enable physics for it. I'll also open the physics menu then go under modify collision shape and here make sure that the collisions are okay and that the shape here is set to circle. So this ball is physics enabled now and can be thrown. I'm gonna go into the manager object now and open the create event. At the bottom here I've created a new function called throw ball and this will be called whenever the ball has to be thrown. Inside the function first of all I'm setting ball thrown to true and then I'm applying some force to the ball to throw it. So this is the power of that force. Then we get the x and y values for the force using the length dir functions. So the length here is force and the direction is the ball direction. So we can now use these x and y values to apply a force to the ball. Here I'm running the physics apply impulse function in the ball instance. So an impulse will be more effective in shooting the ball out of the player's hand. This is where the impulse will be applied and these are the impulse values. Now we are gonna go into the step event and make some changes here. In this part where we set the position of the ball, we now need to use the five position variables instead of simply x and y because we are using physics now and the x and y variables simply won't work anymore. Now in this part we are checking if the sequence is paused and then we are playing it. So here we are also calling the throw ball function. This way when the player gives their inputs and the sequence continues, the ball will be thrown. But the player can actually give input before the sequence is paused. So we also have to handle that. I'm gonna go into the broadcast message event and go under the case for wait for input. Here if the game state is input, then we pause the sequence. But if it's not input, it means that the player has already given their input. So in that case we simply throw the ball. With this in the game you can now click and throw the ball and that works but there is one issue. When the sequence plays again you don't get the ball back so you can't throw it again. So we are gonna work on that now. In my sequence I have a new message right at the beginning and this simply says start. So now I'm gonna go into my broadcast event and here I have a new case for the start message. Here I'm simply setting the game state to start and the ball thrown variable to false. And then here I'm stopping the ball by simply setting the x and y speeds and the angular velocity to zero. So now after you throw the ball, the sequence starts again and you get the ball back so you can throw it again. And now we're gonna work on making the player wait for the ball to disappear before going back into the ground. First we need to add a timer to the ball so it disappears 4 seconds after being thrown. So in the create event of the ball object, I have this. This is the life of the ball after being thrown. So that's 4 seconds multiplied by 60 because there are 60 frames in 1 second. And then we have a timer variable which is equal to the life. Now I'll open the step event and here we have this. Here we are simply checking if the ball is thrown. 
and if it is we are reducing the timer variable by one so the timer will keep going down while the ball is thrown now i'll go into the manager object and here open the broadcast event at the bottom here i have a case for the wait for ball message and under this case i'm simply pausing the sequence so it'll simply wait here and we're gonna play it again when the ball's timer runs out we are handling that in the step event so i'll open it and we have some new code here here we are checking if the game state is end so that's after the ball is thrown and we are also checking if the sequence is paused if that is true we come here where we have another condition and here we are simply checking if the ball's timer is at or below zero so that means that the timer is over so in that case we play the sequence and we also make the ball invisible now i'm gonna go back into the broadcast event and here go into the case for the start message in the ball instance here i'm setting a couple more variables first of all i'm resetting the timer by setting it to life again and i'm also making the ball visible I'm gonna go into the game and throw the ball and now the sequence will wait for the ball to disappear and then the player will go down. Now there is a small issue with the physics. If you let the ball stay in the player's hand, you're gonna see that it's falling down very slowly. So a simple fix for this is to disable the physics for the ball if it's in the player's hand. So in the step event where we set the position of the ball, we're also gonna set its fire active variable to false. And then in the create event in the throw ball method, we are gonna set the fire active variable to true again. So this should fix our issue. Now we can polish our game with particles and animations and we are gonna do all of that with sequences only. So here I have a sequence with flying dirt particles and I use that in my main sequence when the player comes out. Then I have this animation which plays when the ball disappears. So you can use layer sequence create for that. And then I have this animation with the enemy simply breaking apart and of course that plays when the ball hits it. Now this whole project is available on GitHub and you can build on it, modify it, basically do whatever you want and you can find the link in the description. Thanks a lot for watching, you can check out my other videos here and here and make sure to subscribe here to catch my future videos and I'll see you in the next one.